field are instructed to play to a game plan. Certain players are instruct instructed to play a particular pattern. Like the Baxter conceded four goals against Cork in, uh, against Cork in Cork, and, and repeated that in Turles. Uh, they're under instructions to play a different type of game. But like you don't you don't put your your finger on on the John Leahys or the Pat Foxes and the Eden Ryan's and the Nick Englishes or Michael Thierrys. Like they're guys with a lot of skill, and uh, if they're not uh, knowledgeable enough to make their own decisions out in the field. Like, I will not, or neither will Dorney Neil or John O'Donnell, predict what way the ball is going to hop for any of those fellas next Sunday. So they, they have enough skill and enough class to, 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 to make those decisions for themselves. And the same will apply to Joe Coney and Martin Nocton and um, Peter Finnerty and all those guys. You'll be surely hoping, Babs, that your full back line does not concede the goals that you've conceded in your last two matches now. Does that concern you? Uh, it is a concern, but I wouldn't just point a finger at the full back line. Like, goals often start. At, at, at the other end of the field, and I think having looked at the video of the ball of the park game, um, it can be pointed out that mistakes were made further out the field that contributed to those scores against Cork. So, like the, the finger will be pointed in every in, in, in all areas of the field, like where, where where these mistakes were made. You didn't have Nicky English the last day, but other players seem to rise to the occasion to take on that mantle of, I suppose, what you might call the star of the side. Perhaps nobody more so than John Lahey. People say now he's the best forward in the country. Would you agree? I would say that he's maybe not the best forward in the country, but I would say he's one of the best all-round hurlers in the country. He has tremendous skill. He is, he is he's everything that a selector would want in a player. His commitment, uh, his loyalty to the lads, his humour and training, everything about John Lee he is, is, is exactly what, what you'd want 15 players to be. If you are in the market with a checkbook to buy a player, John Lee is the first guy you'd go for. Well, on Sunday, of course, we again have this situation where we now know Tipperary's form very well for the summer, but we know nothing about Galway. What do you know about them? Well, I'm like everybody else. I've, I've read about Tony Keady and I've read about Peter Finnerty and the doubts that have turned their participation. I would say that Ian Ryan is an awful loss to Galway. Uh, but having said that, Galway seem to play their best hurling in all Ireland semi finals. That has been an established fact about Galway over the years. And uh, I suppose that was first evidenced in, in, in 86 against Kilkenny. I would say it was one of the great all-round performances of hurling over the years. They annihilated Kilkenny and Thurles in the All-Ireland semi-final. With this, you know, the backbone by this particular team. And they've been able to repeat that in All-Ireland semi-finals. Now, they haven't retained the same form in All-Ireland finals. For some reason, I don't know. Except when they're playing Tipperary. Uh, I think Galway, they're certainly leading us something like 3-1 to one with this team. They've beaten us in an All-Ireland semi-final, an All-Ireland final and a league final. And we've only got back once in an All-Ireland semi-final two years ago. And there was a lot of doubt surrounding that victory with us. Like Galway had our players sent off in the Tony Keady affair. So um, we won't be conned by anything that Searle might say or Phelan might offer this week. Uh, we know that they will prepare a team and they had a whole year to prepare a team. For, for this particular event. Like, we're not talking about Galway pre starting preparing a week ago. Like, ever since they played the league semi-final in Torles, they had one thing in their mind, and that was the All-Ireland semi-final. In material, who's going to be in it? But the fact that this game is coming just a fortnight after, well, really, I suppose you could say two tough games, would there be any problems in getting the team psyched up again for this? There is always that concern, Michael, but for some reason, we have come out of the Munster final very, very well. We've trained well last week, so we'll offer no excuses if we don't get the right result against Galway. Well, one big boost to Tipperary's chances of getting that right result is the return of Nicky English to the side. Although the Tipperary attack performed exceptionally well against Cork, a player of English's calibre can only strengthen their firepower up front. English himself is aching to be back in the side, having found the experience of sitting on the sideline against Cork a frustrating one. Yeah, it was very frustrating, especially when we were nine points down. It was, you know, I was wondering at that stage, were we gone, were we dead? Was it, would I even get a chance to play another game this year for Tip or maybe ever? <laughs> but um, it was it was a great comeback and, you know, there was no way I could have been better than any of the lads in there and the way I was, so it was great. You did loosen up at one stage during that second half. Was there a time when you might have come on? Well, I think at that stage we were nine points down and, you know, we were clutching at straws, really, and the lads had just warm up there and... I think we got a goal at that point, so any impact I was going to have was going to be purely psychological, I'd say. So when we got the goal, I think it was boost enough. I suppose the question that all Tipperary wants an answer to is, are you going to be right for the next day? Well, it's, I mean, it's very, very short for a hamstring to be, to 
be right in three weeks. I, I've made a great improvement and um, I'm hoping to be okay. This short run that Galway have in the championship, how do you feel about that, especially when Tipperary have worked so hard to get this far? That's the way the system is. You, you mean, you, you just you play along and if Galway had a poor team or you know, they'd, they'd be just cannon fodder for the other teams in the All-Ireland semi-final. Just when, when Galway have a good team and they're in the All-Ireland semi-final, people say, well, they shouldn't be in the All-Ireland semi-final, but they're in there and that's, that's it. And, you know, they're Connacht champions and th that's the system. And, you know, if the only answer to it is to have an open draw, but people then say that they'd love to have a once to final. So that's, that's the system. You just have to go along with it. And I don't know, in, in, when Galway have a good team, it's probably a bit of an advantage to them. But, you know, in, in times when they're not strong, then they, they could do with some match practice, I'd say. But would you like to see that system changed? And how do you think it might be changed? Well, personally, I, I'd, I'd like to play the Munster final. Um, I don't know what, how it would be changed unless you wanted to bring the losers of the Munster and Leinster finals in at quarter-final stage, maybe, and let them play Galway and Antrim or whoever, and then guard the winners so that they'd meet the Leinster finalists and or the Leinster winners and Munster winners in the semi-finals. Maybe that's the only way that I could see it being done, but I'm happy enough with the way it is at the moment. Well, certainly happy enough this year with the tip champions in Munster. Perhaps Galway are happy enough as well. Otherwise, they might have been meeting Cork in an All-Ireland quarter-final, which they would hardly have relished. However, there's no doubt that the present system does pose one massive problem for Galway in that there's no form guide at all for them to judge themselves going into such an important match. It's a situation that Galway manager Cyril Farrell has had to face again this summer. Well, that's the big thing every year, Michael. We win. Everyone says we have an unfair advantage, but I, I count it the terrible disadvantage. We're, we know at the beginning of the year in an All-Ireland semi-final. That's fine, knowing that. But like on the Sunday morning of the match, that's no good to you. Going in, out onto a big game in front of 40, 50, 60,000 people, and you don't actually know how the team are going to perform until this 10 or 15 minutes gone. And uh, going back to where they're going to put it out to Tipperary, and well, like, we've played Tip the last few years, and it's been touch and go. Now, they look very good at the moment, but we have no fears. The only fear we have is of ourselves. We're not a bit of, there's no fear about Tip. The great partnership, of course, of the Galway team over the years has been Finnerty, Keady, McInerney in that half-back line. But it looks now as though you're going to have to break up that partnership. Yeah, well, hopefully, like uh, Tony Keady the week before last, medical opinion said minimum six weeks and maximum maybe an operation. And uh, he trained on Sunday. Now, I, I'm, you know, everyone is saying to me, oh, you're cutting us again and this sort of stuff. But not really, like, we're not sure how, how, how right he is. Uh, we'll look at him again now uh, during the week and we'll see how it goes. But, like... They have, they have been a great half-back line and we had a fantastic half-back line before that, but sure, maybe we'll have us good you know, at the end of Sunday evening with a new half-back line. Fabs Keating was saying to me in an interview that an interesting thing about Galway is that they play better in semi-finals than finals. Do you think part of the reason for that is you have to be 100% right for the semi-final and sometimes maybe have peaked before you get to a final if you do? Yeah, it's a lot to do with it. Like, you look at Tip at the moment, like they could afford, play at Limerick early on, they have changes for the first Cork game, play Cork again, they have changes again, and they'll have a change or two for our game. They're filling in the little weak spots the whole time. But you have to be fair, you, when we played as Leinster or Munster winners, you're actually playing winners. Now, that is the difference. You're playing a winning combination and you have to be fairly right on the day to beat them. You're not going to beat them by, by being half right, you know. But uh, since 1985, we've been in every, we've won every semi-final since 1985. You know, against Tip, Clark, Kilkenny, whoever the hell was in it, and the uh, Tip beat us in '89. So we hope to get our revenge back on them for that day. When Galway get into finals, of course, and when Galway win finals, your critics say, "Ah, oh, well, they've only had to play two matches." Now, obviously, that's not a situation that you think is is ideal. Would you like to see the system changed? And I if would, so, how? I would love to see the open draw brought in. It's it's kind of coming in saying Leinster and the football, and I thought it'd come in this year in Munster and the Hurland, but the big powers got their way again. But I can't see Limerick, Clare, Waterford this year or Kerry if they have any sense at all to go for the open draw. And look what it has done in, in Leinster. They're trying to say they'll have no Munster. You could still have the Munster final or Leinster final as it is at the moment, but like definitely you won't have an All-Ireland Championship proper until there is an open draw. Now, how long that takes to change is a different thing. You know, I still think to have it, you're probably going to have to have the Munster final as well as a different competition and the Leinster final. Next Sunday, of course, you have a different problem to confront. Your last championship visit to Croke Park wasn't a particularly happy one. Will that defeat by Cork play any part in motivating Galway on Sunday? Oh, well, it'll help. You have to learn from your defeats the whole time. Like, it was disappointing to lose in the final. But after saying that, like, people last year were telling me, if you were a traditional team, you wouldn't lose a lead. It's a load of cods wallop in, in Hurling. Like, you have Cork losing two leads. Like, isn't that the last them? They lost them because the other team came along, in Hurling especially, and played very well to win them. At the moment, Tip are actually flying. But they'll have to fly the next day as well. If they don't, we'll beat them.
Cyril Farrell in determined mood going into Sunday's showdown with Tipperary. Well, there are many changes on the Galway team for Sunday's match with several new faces in the side. But it's two of the more established players, Tony Keady and Peter Finnerty, who've been making the news. Akidi has made an unexpected return to fitness after a shoulder injury to take his regular place at centre half back. But for Pete Finnerty, there's a new role on Sunday. He's been named at full back, that's a problem position for Galway since the vastly experienced Connor Hayes vacated the number three shirt. Ironically, his opposite number on the tip team, Noel Sheehy, works for the same company, Bank of Ireland Finance, indeed out of the same regional office. Well, both men took time out to chat about Sunday's game. And I put it to Peter Finnerty that at least they won't be in direct conflict with each other during the match. No, we really won't. We won't clash at all, in fact. The only thing that we'd probably be doing is delivering high balls from one another, hopefully. And it would be quite awkward if we had to play against one another. But having said that, when you've done your Galway jersey or your tip jersey, you give it everything for the hour, the 70 minutes. And when it's over, it's over and you become more colleagues again and you put your wheel to the shoulder with the company. And that's the way it operates. And that's the way it should operate. Noel, can that be an awkward situation for defenders? Because you often find yourself marking somebody that you probably know socially quite well. Does it make it more difficult when you have to go and, and switch off that friendship for a few hours? Yeah, without doubt, you know, I mean, you, you, you've got to um, you've got to concentrate on the job for 70 minutes and it makes it that bit easier if you don't really know the guy, the guy you're marking. If you know him, it obviously makes it that bit harder, you know, you, you, you've, got to, you've got to be aggressive, you know, on the field and you've got to discipline yourself in it. I mean, if you know the guy, it's very hard to do that. Presumably, a full forward also might like to engage you in a little bit of chat during the game to sort of bring down that aggression out of you. Well, that's right. I mean, you meet a lot of players that will say a few things, you know, say words to you on the field just to, to off, uh, offset your concentration. Because, I mean, if you're concentrating, usually you're on top of your game. If you let your concentration slip, you're the forward's like, likely to score a goal or a point or whatever. So, I mean, obviously, to say a few things when you're on the field, but that's all part of it, you know. Well, I'm sure the two of you are far too experienced for all that, but Pete, at the same time, the full-back position is new to you. Will it be very different from wing-back? Yes, Michael, it's completely different. Um, I found it difficult enough to adopt. Um, at wing-back, you can express yourself more probably as a player and you can afford to take gambles, but at full-back, you have to play a percentage game. And I found it very difficult to discipline myself to do that. I was finding myself drifting from the full forward and tended to leave him open in the square and that is lethal in, in, in the game of hurling. If you afford him one shot, it's a goal and that's your, your game ruined. So I have to knuckle down and, and, and concentrate more on the player rather than on, on, on the ball. Well, Pete, no matter what way you look at it, Tipperary have been going very, very well this summer. Now, trying to judge this match, some people think it's going to be a great game. Other th people think that Galway could get a hiding. Yeah, it's very difficult to analyse a Galway team. Um, we've no interprovincial championship, which leaves us a bit vulnerable, and we don't really know at what stage we're at. Um, the last time we were seen playing hurling would be the league quarter final against Kilkenny, and whereas we performed well, we still faded in, in the last quarter, and Kilkenny won that match. Tip have came through the provincial or the Munster championship, and they look very impressive. They've improved gradually, and they lifted to great heights against Cork when, when it was called for when they were nine or ten points down. Um, they're looking at tip on that aspect. They're still probably remembering us as the stage we were in the league. So it's difficult to see that we've done seven, eight weeks training and we're, we're probably as fit as tip, maybe lacking match pra practice. But um, that's all that'll be basically between the teams anyway. Well, that this summer, well, we'll have to wait and see can Mead finally cap it by retaining their title.